This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I usually rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. However, sometimes I like to take a look at cards from a different angle, and that's what we're doing today with a look at the most expensive common white cards in the game. We won't just be looking at the prices, though. I'll also explain what exactly makes these cards so expensive. Commons are, well, common, so many of them are really cheap. However, that's not true of all commons. Common or not, sometimes a card is in short supply, in heavy demand, or some combination of both of those, so it ends up with a high price. While I've done most expensive videos in the past, I did change up how I did things starting with this video. Rather than rely only on the price of the original printing, I'm now using the cheapest version of a card for its price, as it appears in this video. This makes things more interesting because if we rely on original printings alone, cards from Alpha just always come in at number one. This also means the video better reflects exactly how much money you'd have to spend to get your hands on a version of these cards. So the prices that appear in this video are the near mint prices for the printing of the card that has the lowest price. Additionally, we're not looking at promotional or foil versions of cards, just their base form. Those kinds of cards aren't really common anyway. As usual, each set can only occupy one slot on the list. So if more than one card from a set would have made the list, I'll talk about them together. All right, without further ado, let's dive into the list. At number 10, it's Destroy Evil, which costs about $2.29. It's the only standard legal card on the list. For one generic and a white, it's a modal instant that gives you two choices. You can destroy a creature with toughness four or greater, or you can destroy an enchantment. It might seem like each of those modes is too situational for this to be worth it, but the fact is you frequently have a target for one of these modes, and destroying a scary creature for only two mana is especially attractive. While it does see some play out of the sideboard, it sees just as much play in the main deck because it is so frequently useful. Destroy Evil's level of success in multiple formats is tied to the success of Shaeldred the Apocalypse, who's played in every single format where she's legal. Destroy Evil is one of the most common ways to take her down, especially in Standard and Pioneer. While she's not the only permanent Destroy Evil can effectively deal with, she's certainly the evil in those formats that players most frequently want to destroy. Destroy Evil is going to continue to be legal and standard until late 2025, so it's likely to continue to have a high price tag for a common that's available in a standard legal set. It'll be interesting to see if Shieldred ever gets banned, though, and whether or not Destroy Evil loses some value. As is true of many of the cards on the list, Destroy Evil also sees a lot of play in Popper, a format where only commons are legal. While it isn't destroying Shieldred there, there are still tons of juicy targets for it. At number 9, it's Journey to Nowhere, which costs about $2.50. When the enchantment enters the battlefield, it exiles target creature. When it leaves the battlefield, you return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. In other words, it's Oblivion Ring for one less mana, but it can only hit creatures. That's a pretty good deal, because creatures are what you tend to see the most often. It saw significant play in both Standard and Extended while it was legal there, and it's also one of the most heavily played cards in all of Popper, appearing in almost 10% of the decks in the format over the last four months, which is what has had the biggest impact on its price tag, as there are no other 60 card formats right now where the journey is seeing play, and it's not a big player in Commander either. At number 8, it's Ephemerate, which costs about $2.50. For one white mana, this instant exiles target creature you control and then returns it to the battlefield under its owner's control. It also comes with Rebound, which means you exile it when it resolves, and at the beginning of the next upkeep you can cast it for free from Exile. This is super powerful if you can combine it with Enter the Battlefield abilities on creatures, as spending only one mana to get two triggers is amazing. Ephemerate is from Modern Horizons, so it's never been legal in Standard or Pioneer, but it's seen play in every single format it is legal in, including Legacy and Vintage. It sees the most play in Modern, though, where it's used not only to get extra triggers out of creatures like Grief, but you can also ephemerate a reanimated Atraxa, which not only gives you that powerful Enter the Battlefield ability again, but also lets you keep it permanently, even if you reanimated it with Gorio's Vengeance. Unsurprisingly, it also sees a ton of play in Popper Flicker decks, which specialize in the same sort of thing. It's been in 9% of the Popper decks to top 8 major events over the last 4 months, and it's very heavily played in Commander, showing up in 6% of all white Commander decks on EDH Rec. In other words, Ephemerate is in heavy demand for modern Popper and Commander, and it's also seeing play in the other formats it's legal in, and that's led to this little common costing more than a whole lot of rares do. 
And number 7, it's Standard Bearer, which costs $279. From one generic into white, it's a 1 1, and it has the Flag Bearer type. And that's important because of its ability. If your opponent chooses targets as part of casting a spell or activating an ability, they have to choose at least one Flag Bearer on the battlefield. It's sort of like Spellskite from about a decade earlier, except you don't have to spend any mana or life to make your opponent target it. This makes it a good way to protect your other creatures. While it's never seen play in most 60 card formats, and it's not in much demand in Commander either, it's another white card that's heavily played in Popper. It's used there in Aura decks, which seek to stick a whole bunch of auras on one creature and win the game quickly. Obviously, the downside with auras is that you can get utterly blown out if your opponent destroys your creature. Standard Bearer makes it so that one removal spell isn't going to solve your opponent's problem, and since two swings with a creature with a bunch of auras on it is often enough to win the game anyway, it buys you the time that you really need. This, coupled with the fact that Standard Bearer has only been printed once, way back in 2001's Plane Shift, means that the demand for the card is stretching its supply to its limit, so it sets you back almost three bucks if you want one of these. At number 6, it's Prismatic Strands, which costs about $3. For 2 generic and a white, it's an instant that prevents all damage that sources of the color of your choice would deal this turn. It also comes with Flashback, which means you can cast it from your graveyard and exile it, and in this case you can do it for no mana at all. You just have to tap a single untapped white creature you control. So this is a fog effect that you can make one-sided, and you can get the effect twice for a very low investment. While it saw a little bit of play in Extended back in the day, it's another card on the list that is heavily played in Popper. It's played in control decks in the format, like Gates, which look to assemble lots of lands with the Gate subtype and take advantage of them with Basilisk Gate. It's appeared in 8% of the Popper decks to top 8 major events over the last 4 months. That, combined with the fact that the card has only been printed twice, results in a $3 price tag. While it received a reprint in Commander 2019, the cheapest printing of the card is actually the original one from Judgment. At number 5, it's Sunscape Familiar, which costs about $4. For one generic and a white, it's a 0-3 with Defender, and it reduces the cost of green and blue spells you control by one generic mana. It saw some play in Extended back in 2005, but it's done the most in Popper, where it helps enable one of the premier combo decks in the format. There, it helps power a Flicker deck, which can produce some powerful locks using Ghostly Flicker, Snap, Archaeomancer, and Azorius Chancery. Because Snap only costs one mana with the Familiar in play, you can actually net mana when you untap the Chancery in another land, and you can blink the Archaeomancer to get the Snap back and keep on going. This allows you to bounce everything every single turn, which is pretty impossible for your opponent to overcome. Even when it isn't helping produce a lock, the Familiar is just a nice card that allows the deck to do more powerful things earlier in the game. It's also in more than 13,000 decks on EDH Rec, Basically, if you're a Bant deck, it's a card you should consider, as the cost reduction effect is the real deal. It's especially at home in Arcades decks, which have the right color identity and love creatures with Defender. It's a common that needs a reprint pretty badly, since it's seeing so much play right now, and the only version of the card out there is the original printing from Plane Shift. At number 4, I've got three cards, and it's not because they're from the same set. It's because they're super similar and frequently see play alongside one another, and it would be really boring if I gave each of these their own slot. There's the $5 Souls Attendant, the $3.50 Suture Priest, and the $3 Soul Warden. Souls Attendant and Soul Warden are both 1 mana 1 1s that gain you 1 life when a creature enters the battlefield, and Suture Priest is a 2 mana 1 1 that gains you 1 life when a creature you control enters, and makes your opponent lose 1 life when a creature enters the battlefield under their control. All three of these can gain you some incredible life when you just naturally play a game of magic, and they're great with life gain payoffs too because they trigger so frequently. They also come with combo potential. If you can find a way to put any number of creatures in play with them or blink a creature over and over, you can gain a zillion life. The three of them saw play together in modern life gain decks, sometimes called Soul Sisters. Unlike many of the cards on the list, they aren't that heavily played in Popper, but all three of them see tons of play in Commander. This is because the Attendant and Warden will gain you even more life in multiplayer games, and the Priest will make players lose more life too, and life gain is of course a very popular strategy in Commander. Soul's Attendant and Suture Priest both only have two printings, while Soul Warden has been reprinted several times. This is why the Attendant and Priest are significantly more expensive. At number 3, it's Dust to Dust, which costs about $10. For one generic and two white, this sorcery exiles two artifacts. That's a pretty nice two for one, provided you have the targets. It's another card that gets here largely as a result of seeing heavy play in Popper, where it's frequently a sideboard card that can be brought in against the format's artifact decks like Affinity. 
There just aren't very many copies of this card out there either. Its only printings are from the Dark and 5th edition, so it hasn't received a reprint since 1997. It's a little surprising that it doesn't see more play in Commander, as there aren't that many cards out there this efficient that can exile two artifacts, and you're pretty likely to have targets in that multiplayer format, but maybe people aren't eager to shell out 10 bucks for a common. At number two, I've got the two most expensive white commons from Portal Three Kingdoms. False Defeat is a legitimate number two at $15, while Riding Red Hair would have been in between Dust to Dust and the Soul Sisters if it had its own slot. While changing the way I compile these lists may have prevented alpha cards from showing up here, it didn't do the same for Portal Three Kingdoms, which inevitably shows up on any most expensive list, since the set is very rare and has lots of unique cards. It was printed as an introductory product for Asian markets, so it's a very simplified version of Magic, and for a long time, cards from the set weren't even legal in Magic games. They only changed that in 2005, many years after Portal Three Kingdoms was printed. False Defeat costs three generic and a white, and it reanimates a creature from any graveyard. That's a pretty nice effect, though nothing to write home about. Writing Red Hair is the kind of card where you can really see that this was an introductory set, it's two generic and a white for a sorcery that gives plus three, plus three in horsemanship to a creature until end of turn. You can see a sword and shield next to power and toughness in its text box. That was there so that players could easily remember what those numbers meant. It also uses the horsemanship keyword, which was this self-contained set's version of flying. Only other creatures with horsemanship can block creatures with it. That actually makes it better than flying in Magic, since so few creatures come with the keyword. Also, this simplified set had no instants, and this card probably would be one in a normal set. Anyway, my point here is that neither of these cards is great, especially not riding red hair, and they barely see play anywhere. But they are both expensive, because there are very few of them in existence, as a result of how strange and rare Portal Three Kingdoms is. And at number one, I've got the two most expensive white commons from Arabian Nights, the $17 Army of Allah and the $5 Camel. As with Portal Three Kingdoms, Arabian Nights is gonna show up on virtually any most expensive video because it's Magic's very first expansion, and it features several commons that have never been reprinted, like these two cards. Army of Allah is one generic and two white for an instant that gives all attacking creatures plus two plus zero, and Camel is one white mana for a zero one with banding, and as long as it's attacking, you prevent all damage deserts would deal to Camel and creatures that band with it. Banding is kind of funny to talk about right now because in some ways it was an earlier version of the mount mechanic in Magic's newest set, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. The flavor conveyed here is supposed to be the same. One of your creatures rides this camel, after all. Anyway, banding means that you get to decide how opposing creatures deal combat damage if your band blocks or becomes blocked. As with the two Portal Three Kingdom cards that we just looked at, neither of these cards is very good, but they are super rare, so they're expensive. So those are the most expensive white commons in the game. If you want to own any of these cards that really aren't all that common, check out the description where you can find a Direct Card Kingdom link for every card that appeared in the video. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to catch up on past videos, including more that look at the most expensive cards in the game, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching. <laughs>